working with those components, if you develop enough concentration, that's why they call it deity yoga. Yoga has many meanings. One of the meanings is exercise. Another meaning of yoga is um, merging or becoming. So uh, you merge with, um, uh, uh, you, you actually become the archetypal content that you create. And as I say, it's not to go insane and it's not to shamanically channel something, it's to gain insight into the arbitrary nature of self-identification. If it's like playing with, with, with identity, like with Lego toys, you know, it's like a tinker toy kit. You put one identity together, then you take it apart, and you, then you put another one together, then you take it apart. Because it's not just one, one deity yoga, it's like a sequence of deities. And I take that as uh, a path that could, in theory, give you insight into no self. So that's a whole way of working. Then there's sort of um, Zen, which has a lot of different aspects to it, which I won't go into, but one, just one of the aspects in Zen is um, a merging of inside and outside by um, pouring all your attention on the physical sight, physical sound, uh, physicality of the body. There's only so much real estate in consciousness. Um, so if all the water sloshes out, that inner world contracts and vanishes. Um, and you merge, you become one with uh, what was formerly out. So that's a way of working. Um, <laughs> then there's a whole other approach which might be called uh, the meditation of no meditation, where you uh, simply drop all efforting. That contrasts with the other ways of working, right? You can take the components of self and untangle them and see their vibrant void nature, or you can merge with an archetype, <laughs> um, the ordinary identity contracts, a mythic identity expands, once again you get insight um, into the arbitrary nature of self-identification. Or you can merge out, see out, hear out, feel out. Um, but those all require effort, um, particularly the, the deity yoga type practice. Uh, you're having to actually create intentionally, the image, the talk, the body sensations, and so forth. Um, so very contrasting with that is, okay, um, drop all effort. So that's a do-nothing kind of approach. That works for some people well. Um, a contrasting approach to all of the above, which um, I don't normally do as part of the system, but it's definitely something that is powerful and something to look into if you're interested, is this whole sort of self-inquiry way of working. Um, it's been discovered and rediscovered in different forms, um, uh, different cultures, different times. Um, it tends to be associated with uh, some of the Hindu uh, Advaita teachings and so forth. There's some great, uh, uh, great Advaita teachers online that have had really deep experience using this approach. Um, so, uh, in Sanskrit, it's called Atma Vichara. Vichara means to investigate, and Atma means self. Um, but it also is part, uh, another part of some of the Zen teachers. Um, uh, who am I? What are you? Um, in fact, that was the koan that um, my very first teacher gave me. Um, Okamura 
Keishin Sensei. Um, that was the last time when I, he and I were together in Japan. I was going back to the US and he said, okay, here's your koan. Who are you? What are you? And um, uh, it's like, okay, how do I work on this koan? Um, turn the light back on itself. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> um, swim back to the source of the stream of consciousness. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> uh, just do it. <laughs> so um, that was sort of the, I'm paraphrasing, but that was sort of the dialogue, okay? Um, there's not much you can, it's not an algorithm, okay? It's like groping. You're pushing back, pushing back, pushing back. Um, a question, koan, who am I? Or where does thought come from? Or who sees? Uh, you can choose any language that you want. There's a lot of ways to formulate the question. The important thing to realize is this is koan work. This is, this is not an intellectual question that you're going to say, Oh, I am, and there's going to be a substantive, and now you have answered that question. That's not what this is about. This is uh, about uh, each arising of self. You're trying to sort of metaphorically look over your shoulder and see where it came from. Um, as I say, it can be formulated in a lot of different words, but the method is the same, uh, essentially the same, or very similar. Uh, for some people, that ends up um, very much related to that spacious uh, thing that we were doing, where you start to get a sense that, okay, I'm, I'm the space all around looking in. Uh, that might be a stage that you pass through and you disidentified with the content of experience. Um, a good uh, teacher of this method won't, won't let you um, mistake uh, a, f uh, a fixated sense of witness as the true self, though. If, it, if it's at all fixated in space, like, okay, I'm over here kind of thing, well, no, you need to look back a little further. Um, so, um, interestingly, it's not just in uh, Hinduism and some of the uh, uh, Buddhist uh, schools uh, of um, uh, Zen, but you actually find this method, um, or something a little like this, used in some of the Theravada traditions, where they're trying to sort of like inquire uh, uh, push it back, push it back. I've seen some Theravada teachers that uh, teach this way. 